popping out like Jack in the Box. I'm gon' shoot if this 30's all that I got. Nigga, time's up. Got my coins up, my bars up. So we find them. We gon' slide them, we line them. Strip it kind of. Pistol grip, I got them kinds of. I'm not your driver. Shot no hit. No one likes us, and we don't care. It's a chant that us Union fans have heard for years and years now, and now it's become the Philadelphia sports anthem, thanks to, large in part, Jason Kelsey and our Super Bowl parade two years ago. But now more than ever, this song resonates with the Union like never before. We're talking about a team that everyone keeps sleeping on. They don't think we're good enough, and we keep getting the unfair suspension. But this season, guys, it feels different. And the Union just got off their first midweek match of the year against FC Cincinnati, and here on Dude by the River, we're going to talk about that. And that's coming up next by Settles. Eh, dale. That is right, mi gente. Welcome back to Duke by the River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union. And if you haven't done it already, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button. Get those notifications sent to you. Please help this channel grow. And we got the Sixers t-shirt today because the Sixers are back in Philadelphia with a 1-1 tie against the Toronto Raptors. And we got to support the boys for game three. So our Philadelphia Union had our first midweek match against SC Cincinnati and Talent Energy Stadium. And boy, what a time it was down in Chester. I, for one, can tell you I had a blast. And it is so fun right now being a Union fan. They are playing beautiful football. They are winning matches as well. Allen Energy truly feels like a home field advantage right now. And in came FC Cincinnati, a team that was struggling, a team that's been declining, but had a good second half against the New York Red Bulls. So it was no opponent to be sleeping on. But our boys in blue stayed focused and played a hell of a match. Now let's talk about the tactics in the starting lineup for the Philadelphia Union in this match. And Jim Kirchner stuck with the 4-4-2 diamond that we continue to see this season. And our lineup went as so. And starting in goal, we would see Matt Fries get his second start of this season as Andre Blake is still hurt with a torn groin. Matt would have a great match here. Unfortunately, Matt suffered what appeared to be a hip injury. Now, Jim Kirchner didn't go further. Uh, we don't have a full injury report on Matt Freeze. What it appears to be is uh, some sort of a hip injury he got while diving for a save in this match. In the 41st minute, Carlos Coronel would have to come out for Matt Freeze. And Carlos would play really good in 50 minutes. He made some big saves and kept us in this match. Overall, you know, we have three solid goalies who can start right now. We just need them to stay healthy. Saturday, we play again. Um, I'm not expecting to see Andre or Matt Freeze. So it'll be really interesting to see what options we have to back up Carlos for Saturday's match. In the back line, starting left to right again, we saw Ray Gaddis, Austin Trusty, Jack Elliott, and Olivier Bazio. Now, obviously, the talk before the match was Kai Wagner getting an extra suspension on that red card he received in the Montreal match. Controversial or not, we were given less than 24 hours to prepare for this suspension again. And I thought we would see Matt Rial here. But Jim Kirchner wanted to stick with Ray Gaddis and Olivier Bazio as the fullbacks. And... Honestly, raises the question, when are we ever going to see Matt Real start for the Union? In the midfield, we had the same four guys again. Starting with the left shuttle midfield, we saw Jameer Montero get another start. At the number six role, Harris Medunian. At the right shuttle midfielder, our captain, Alejandro Eloya. And at the tip of the diamond, we saw Brandon Messi Aronson, man. Yo, and honestly, we got to start with Brandon. This guy is improving match after match. The fact that we're seeing an 18-year-old kid play with the intelligence and the poise that he's playing with is, is absolutely amazing. The kid does not seem to be phased to be playing with the big boys. And every time he has the ball, it seems like he already knows what to do with it before it even gets to his foot. Jamiro Montero had another great match as well. And in all honesty, Jamiro might be the most skillful player that we have on this roster. Our captain, what else can I say? Had another great match. You know, Alejandro does so much for us in the press. You know, he will even play out wide get some crosses in man that guy that guy's a joke in the 67th minute however Lutinho would come in for Brandon Aronson you know Aronson definitely needs some rest he's been putting some serious minutes over the last month 
and El Asinio came in at the right time. You give Asinio 20 minutes in a match, he will look like Ronaldinho in his prime. I'm totally kidding, but the skill that El Asinio possesses is incredible. He would go on to have an assist in this match. Boy, El Asinio had FC Cincinnati defenders dangling. And up top, Jim Kirchner went with Fafa Piccolo and Casper Shabilko. We finally cleared it up. It is Casper Shabilko. Shout out to my boy Gigio for the proper pronunciation. And honestly, guys, these are the two hottest strikers that we have right now. Right now, we have a perfect situation. We have five strikers that we can put out any match we want. Any and every match out there. Because we're talking about Fafa Piccolo, David Akam, Casper Shabilko, Corey Burke, and everyone keeps forgetting that we still have Sergio Santos Gomes in the shelves waiting right now, trying to get healthy. Bilko got another goal, second goal in two matches, and continues proving to Jim Kirchner that he belongs in this rotation with the other forwards. And Fafita, Ibanita. Man, Fafa is back. It took him a little bit to get his feet wet, but Fafa looked like Fafa yesterday. He was making great runs, he had attacking opportunities, and he even got a goal to put the cherry on top of this great performance by Fafa. And honestly, guys, this match went similarly to the last matchup we had against Cincinnati in Nippert Stadium. You know, it started off with a very physical match. It was back and forth. There was turnovers on both sides. Both teams were pressing high, and it finished nil-nil at halftime. But in the second half, you know, the Union did not lose confidence. They did not lose focus on this match. They kept doing what they were doing in the first. They kept chipping away. They kept pressing and finally got the goal. And we're facing an FC Cincinnati goalie in Spencer Ritchie or Riche. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. You know, us and Sons of Ben were giving it to Spencer. And, you know, he came up big plenty of times for Cincinnati yesterday. But in the 63rd minute, there was nothing Spencer could have done. As Casper Shabilko started the goal scoring off. And then in the 70th minute, Fafa would add the second goal to put the icing on this cake. The Union would finish this match 2-0. Same final score as the first matchup these two teams had. And now have won five matches out of their last seven. That is incredible. And the key thing that we have to look here is the Union one in the stat line again. Look at shots, shots on target, possession, percentage. The Union were better at all three of those big categories. And now as Union fans, we get to sit back and watch as the rest of the MLS battle out this weekend. Because our boys are in first place. I don't care if we're in May, we're in first place. This is something exciting. This is something that now, when all the people here in Philadelphia come at us soccer fans, we can say, hey, we got a first place team down in Chester. Why aren't you coming down? I keep saying it week in and week out on the show. This Eastern Conference in the MLS is not that difficult. We have the perfect team with the perfect depth to make a run here in this playoffs. And I expect these guys to go full throttle on the supporter shield. I'm not kidding. But guys, those are my thoughts on this match. Clearly, I'm super stoked where the Union are right now. But please, in the comments below, let me know how you guys feel about the Union going forward. The first place Philadelphia Union. And as always, guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button for the notifications. Please, let's grow this channel together. And as always, Barcetos, Duke Bond.